the initial idea for the No Written was that I was on tour with my album Mass Seduction and I wanted to make a concert film. And so I reached out to one of my best friends, Carrie Brownstein, and I said, I want to make a concert film, but I think there should be some interstitials in between that really tie it together narratively. And then we started thinking about um, other pop star, rock star documentary tropes and realized that um, at the end of the day, there there's usually these things that happen in them, right? Like they're a normal person, but they, are unlucky in love they go back to their family where they're from and they see you know just how far they've come and there's just all these kind of touch points that these kind of films hit we thought well if we are going to be creating some sort of dramatic arc to begin with in in a so-called documentary then why don't we just script the whole thing and really go bananas with the idea of performance and authenticity and rock star persona. So we we made it a, um, a bizarre acid trip of, uh, of a meta documentary. And after you do all that, how do you go back, if you're on tour now or about to go on tour, how do you then return to normal life and do interviews like this after you've kind of had, had fun with it all and been in it? Do you look at everything a little differently now having gone through that process? Well, I, I would say that it's, uh, I guess part of me likes to keep people guessing, but but also I think that in this way, making a meta scripted documentary about my life actually gets at the truth of my life more than what um, if I had done the straight ahead way. Because you're such a creative cool artist that can look at all these different kinds of things and filter it through the same it gets to a lot of the things that I wanted to say about performance and identity, just in a sure. weird way. Yeah, and you're, you're so good on camera and so comfortable on camera, and you always have been from your earliest videos and earliest visuals and performances. How, is, this, is this a natural progression to get to this point in terms of your image and, and, and now the big screen? Is this something you've always kind of slowly edged towards? Well, it's a funny thing. I, I of course, it, probably won't shock anyone to know that I was president of the theater club in high school. So that's, I definitely loved the theater from an, from an early age, but I wasn't really an actor. It made me very scared and I felt very uncomfortable. Um, and then as I started performing music, you know, that is, that's, it's not acting, but it is, uh, there are some parallels, right? Um, with culling emotion and, and being really present. So I guess, I guess it only occurred to me a, a couple days before we were about to start principal photography that I was going to be acting in this movie. It didn't occur to me at all. <laughs> and I didn't, and then I started to go, can I act? And I was just like, well, I guess we'll see. And so um, it was a really fun process. And I have to say it was a very easy way. It was a kid gloves way to start to get into acting because I it was something that I wrote with my best friend I started it with my best friend and you know the whole cast and crew was just like lovely and easy and sure when you take on some real things in this you take on dealing with starting you take on dealing with having your personal life out there just put into words what that was like for you kind of examining that and, and how cathartic was some of that well, I think what happens, especially if you get um, talked about in some way in the media that doesn't feel resonant with who you are, at first it's really jarring. And then you go, well, yeah, it's, but that it's a completely different world. It, it often doesn't bear a whole lot of um, real resemblance to your actual life. So for me, it was very fun to play with my aspects of my public persona that had been kind of taken out of context or had been told without my real uh, say or spin my own you know take on it so this was just fun it was fun to make fun of myself it was fun to make fun of the whole um dog and pony show you deal with that initial big wave of Guard and the celebrities that came with it because I remember I did a shoot with you at Amoeba Records you remember some years ago we went shopping for records together oh yeah hey 
What's in my bag? That was a, exactly. We, we had fun. You, you turned me on to some cool artists, and we kind of had a blast. But the, we were able to walk around the store, and you weren't swamped with people. It was kind of right before things really blew up for you. How did you adjust to that? But the next record thing, it was, you know, it was a game changer, I think. Oh, that's very sweet. I, honestly, I feel, first of all, all my interactions with fans are lovely. I, I think I'm at the, the nice amount of um, celebrity, if we can call it that, where I might get sent over a free appetizer platter, you know, an occasional free drink. Um, and I have really lovely human interactions with people, but I'm not at the point where I'm falling around or, you know, accosted in any kind of way. I, a very, very mellow version of, of stardom here. I've been doing so many air quotes, just one hand too, how bizarre. I've never, I, I so rarely do this. And for some reason with you, I'm like all, all over it. But I'm, at, I'm at a very manageable level of, of people knowing who I am. Yeah. I meant that in a good way. Just oh, yeah. Have my you know. yeah. I appreciate I appreciate you overestimating my, my level of success. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Talk about what it's like to be in tour mode. Whether it's, I've caught up with you a few times, either right before a show or in tour mode. And I know for some artists, it's a whole different world when you're in tour mode, but you're always promoting this as well at the same time. Are you a different person now that you're in you know, daddy's home tour mode and you're bringing that to the stage. We're yeah, I mean, certainly tour mode has been a pretty big gear shift from what's been going on the past mm -hmm. couple of years. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a whole different mindset. You know, like if you're, if you're in writer mode, as I like to call it, you have to be really porous and it's insular. And, you know, I don't have a lot of contact with people and then suddenly tour mode it's like you're uh just on the go ready to perform at any moment and it's just a different completely different gear so i'm excited to do it again i miss people i miss playing music live i miss the unpredictability i miss the feeling of me and thousands of people in a room dreaming the same dream for an hour and a half that's that's really magic and i and i don't know another word for it and there's nothing i can do in my day-to-day -day life to get the same feeling so looking forward to it thank you for watching if you want more extra hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video